Here we are, video number seven. This is a very short video, just a couple of things I want to get across in this video. I'd like to discuss uh, solving for N and I. Uh, in the previous videos, we've talked about how we find a future value given a present value or a present given a future or an annual amount, an equivalent uniform annual amount given, uh, given a present value or a future value or solving those from annual cash flows, whatever, whatever that is. Um, but in this video, we'll talk about questions where we need to, uh, we're given perhaps a present and a future value or a present and an annual cash flow. And we're going to solve for N, the number of periods, and I, the uh, interest rate. Uh, and I would encourage you to examine page 128 in the 16th edition text. And you can see the formulas there uh, may be a little difficult to solve for I or N in a closed form manner. Um, it, uh, it's doable, uh, certainly with P and F, where you have 1 plus I to the N, solving for I or solving for N is no big deal. Um, but anyway, you'll see some homework and uh, perhaps a quiz problem on, uh, on this, and solving for N and solving for I. So I'm just going to go through a couple of short examples, uh, primarily to show you the function uh, that you can use to solve for those. It makes things much easier, and uh, there's no point in making it overly difficult when the ease of solving them on a spreadsheet is there. So let's, uh, let's yank up the uh, spreadsheet, and this spreadsheet will be available to you. There you have it. We're going to uh, look at the solve for n tab. Here's the kind of problem we would face. You want to retire when you have $2 million in your savings. So you want to retire as a two millionaire. And your plan to get there is to deposit uh, $12,000 into an account each year. So for example, if you made $120,000 a year, I'm sure you'd like that. Uh, you'd save 10% of that after tax. Uh, again, taxes are not considered here. We don't address taxes until later in the, in the term. But we will deposit $12,000 into an account, some sort of investment. Uh, this account earns, on average, 9% uh, per year over the life of the uh, investment. Considering only these deposits, how many years until you can retire? So we are given the annual deposit amount. We're given the future goal that we're trying to reach and we're given an interest rate, uh, a projected likely interest rate that we can earn on these funds. And we wanna know how long do we have to go, how many years do we have to uh, invest and work until we can retire with the $2 million in our account. Uh, the A, um, the annual deposit is equal to, and, and we're going to now start to stick pretty, very closely to, uh, to the cash flow conventions. This is a deposit into an account. So from our perspective, this is money out of our pocket into an account. That will be a negative $12,000. And I'll also like to show you a new format. This format, um, standard financial or accounting um, format, the red indicates negative, a negative value, and the 12,000 um, in parentheses indicates a negative value. So when you see a red uh, uh, figure, dollar figure, uh, especially with the parentheses, it's kind of a double whammy there. This means a negative value. I have, you can select this format up here. I have it already entered in my, uh, in my uh, spreadsheet, but you can, um, you can, I'm not sure I can show all this on my uh, miniature screen here with this, uh, here, let me, 
get their custom uh, more currencies. We can come up here to more currencies. That would take us to dollars, uh, euros, um, such as that. This is a custom number format. And you can see these are two options for the, uh, for the formats. So uh, you can select one of those if you wish. I like the format where red is negative. Uh, be that as it may, our future amount is $2 million. That's a positive cash flow. That would be when we retire, we would put $2 million into our pockets. Now, I know good and well that with $2 million, you're not going to get it out all out in cash. You're going to do something else with it. But for the, the purposes of this problem, it would be a net positive uh, cash flow into my pocket. And the interest rate is 9%. 9% uh, per year. Okay, how many years? Well, um, there's no formal formula given in the text, so we don't have to worry about that. We will simply refer to the spreadsheet function, and that function is NPER, number of payment periods for an investment. So NPER will, will solve for N, and that is if you looked at the A, uh, and F relationship, for example, uh, equation 412 in the 16th edition, and you, you s p plugged in for A and plugged in for F and you solve for N, you would get this, the result that we're getting um, here. NPER, and the uh, first argument, as you can see here, is the rate, the interest rate. And uh, I'm going to close this. Um, because I don't want it in the way, but you can see that it will be the rate and then the payment amount, which is our A, and then present and then future. That's the, uh, those are the arguments. So NPER, the rate is the first argument, right? The second argument is the uh, payments or deposits, A, the third argument would be the present amount. We don't have a present amount, so we skip that argument. And finally, the future amount, $2 million. And let's see what answer we get here. Okay, 32.17. Let's uh, get rid of a few decimal places there. 32.17, and this would be since our interest rate is in years, this is going to be number of years, 32, a little more than 32 years, and we'll be a two millionaire. So if you can scrape together at the age of 22, for example, you graduate, and uh, if you can scrape together $12,000 to invest each year, you can, uh, you can retire with $2 million in your account in, uh, let's see, 32 when you're 54. And uh, that would be a pretty sweet deal. So there it is, the NPER function. Similarly, we have a function where we can solve for I. Solve for that, for the interest rate. So here you go. You want to retire when you have $2 million in savings. You're going to deposit that same $12,000 amount each year. And you're going to define now that you'd like to retire in 30 years. So the 32.17 was a bit too long for you. And you say, boy, I'd like to squeeze that in uh, when, I'm, when I've invested for only 30 years. So, so what interest rate do I need to earn so that I can retire in the time allowed, the time I've indicated, 30 years, with the funds that I desire, the $2 million? What interest rate must I earn? So here again, uh, negative $12,000 each year. I, that was pre-formatted. It didn't just pop up with that. Um, future amount is $2 million. And uh, the N is in years is 30 years. And since N is number of years, when we solve for I, I will be the annual interest rate, not monthly, the annual interest rate rate and our deposits are annual. The function we will use now, and, and as I mentioned briefly in the previous video, there are 
two different functions that we could use. One of them is called IRR for internal rate of return. That's something that we'll use later. I'll describe it later. Uh, the one we'll use here is called rate. R-A-T-E, the rate function. And the rate function has, uh, has the same, roughly the same arguments. Let me show you here. Roughly the same kinds of arguments as, uh, as before. The uh, number of periods is the first argument. And then we have the payments, then the present value, then the future value. Um, ending or beginning, that's end of period or end of period cash flows. The default is always end of period. We can just ignore that. Now, there is, is something a little bit scary, and that's the last argument here, and that's rate guess. Now, I generally find that anything that asks for a guess is a little bit squirrely. Um, but the way that the algorithms in these spreadsheets solve for I, uh, it's the numerical techniques. Some of you may have taken a numerical methods class. And uh, that means that uh, it turns out that you can get caught in some valley, um, perhaps when you're trying to solve, and you can get hung up with the, with the particular uh, structure of the cash flows and the particular method that's being used to solve and you can get stuck. Also, you can have multiple interest rates. Uh, we, we generally don't have that. I'll discuss that at the appropriate time. Don't worry about it. Now, uh, it is very important when using a rate function that you put in the right sign on the cash flows. Negative for cash out, positive for cash in. If you don't have the correct sign on them, you may end up with the ugly pound numb uh, result from your function, which is always this uh, disconcerting to receive. Keep your cash flows right and you'll be okay. The example they use here is uh, 12, uh, 12 periods, negative 100 is the payment per period, a $400 present value, uh, no future value, uh, end of the period cash flows, again, that's what our default, and a guess of 0.1 or 10%. We are not gonna worry about the guess. Uh, I know that I don't need a guess for this problem. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the first argument, um, number of periods is 30. The second argument is the payments, 12,000, negative 12,000 notice, very important. Third is the present, amount. We don't have that, so we'll skip that argument. Fourth is the future amount of two million dollars. And you can already see it gives us a little preview of what the answer will be. I'll close out the function and it's 10.1 percent. So if we'd like to retire after making those twelve thousand dollar deposits each year with two million dollars and in do so in 30 years, we need an investment or series of investments that will yield 10.1% each year. Uh, that's, uh, that's really it, actually. That's uh, solve for I, solve for N. We've got the, uh, we've got the uh, NPER function and we have the uh, rate function. Those two functions will come in handy, I'm sure, on the homework, either three or homework four. I can't remember exactly which one. And it will also come in handy uh, on a quiz question, perhaps, coming up soon. So that's it for video seven, solve for N, solve for I. Uh, in the next video, video eight, uh, we will touch, uh, touch on uh, the next major topic, which is deferred annuities. And um, I think you'll find the, the challenge with the deferred annuities is the timing of the cash flows, the relation of P to A and the relation of F to A. And we will start, this will start getting a little bit more difficult uh, 
in terms of just looking at the timing of the cash flows. Where does the cash flow occur on the timeline? We'll talk about that pretty extensively as we solve some example problems. Okay, then I will see you on video eight.